Okay, so in the last video we talked about creating a file in vCarve, as well as importing your vectors from Illustrator, and making sure everything's centered within your new artboard. Today we're going to get a little bit more in-depth and talk about toolpath setup in vCarve, how to create them, uh, adjusting your bit settings, previewing, editing any nodes that you may need to, and saving your file for CNC. So, the first thing that we need to talk about, hopefully your design is in your file. It looks like this. If you have not created a file yet, go back and watch that video. So what is a toolpath? A toolpath is what is going to tell the CNC exactly where to cut, how deep to cut, what bit you're using, and exactly how to move while it's cutting. So all these things are very important. Without setting up proper toolpaths, you're going to end up very disappointed with your design, and you may end up actually harming the machine. So, pay close attention. Now, how do we create toolpaths? Well, on our screen, on the right-hand side, there should be a tab at the top on the right that says toolpaths. And if I just leave it, it's going to disappear eventually because it's not pinned to the side. It likes to kind of go away. So we're going to use this pin right here to pin our toolpath window to the right-hand side. There are a few different types of toolpaths in this program. We're really only going to focus on using two of them. They're the first tool two toolpath options here, profile toolpath and pocket toolpath. These have very specific functions. The profile toolpath, as the icon shows, cuts along a path. So that means if I was cutting this T out, my bit would move along the line. It would just cut the border out like this. If I wanted to cut the inside of my T and clear the material out of the inside of my shape, that would be using a pocket toolpath, the second option here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what would happen if I take my entire design, by clicking and dragging, I'm going to select, and I try to go ahead and make a pocket toolpath with it. So, selected my design and then click pocket toolpath. Now, there's some specific settings we need to be aware of here that are very important. Our cutting depth, this is going to be specific for these tiles because we want to cut through the top layer of color and expose that middle color of your tile. The cut depth for these tiles should be 0.11. Now, I have a tool set up in mine that doesn't exist in yours. What I want you to do is I want you to go to select. You probably only see two different end mill bits here, probably 0.25 inch and 0.5 inch. Neither of these are going to be the bits that we use. We need to create a new one. So how did I create it? Well, I clicked on the end mill that says 0.25, and then I went ahead and clicked copy. Okay, so mine made a copy. I really don't need it, so I'm gonna delete it, right? So let's say this is my copy. When I copy it, I now have two, so I'm not totally getting rid of this one. But I can now edit it and save it. So the end mill that we're using is actually a, a 16th inch bit, which is really small. So we need to edit the name so that we know that this is a 16th inch. So instead of 0.25, we're going to add the 06. So 0 0.0625 inches. Yes, it is an end mill. We need to also put the diameter of our bit here as well, 0 0.0625. The pass depth for our bit is going to be 0 0.313. And our step over is going to be 0 0.025 at 40%. This number should automatically calculate for you if you put this pass step in. Okay, I'm looking over at my screen. I see that we've got four passes. So this information may change because I think I'm going to have you guys do two passes. Why? Because of time. The more passes that you take, the longer it's going to take. I think we can get it done in two passes. 0.11 is not that deep. So let's go ahead and up this. Okay, let's do 0625. Okay, did it auto calculate? Of course not. Okay, let's see. We'll keep our step over the same. Okay, spindle speed, you may have to adjust this as well. I'm going to leave my spindle speed at 15,000 RPMs and the feed rate of 100 inches a minute and a plunge rate of 30 inches per minute. Make sure all of this information in your screen matches what I have here. Going to go ahead and push apply, and then OK. So notice my passes went down to two. That's good. That'll be a time saver. 
You shouldn't have to do anything with this large area clearance tool. We are not clearing large areas. The direction of your um, offset or your raster does not matter, so just leave it on offset is fine. We don't need to worry about ramp plunge moves. Um, everything else should be fine. So you can name your toolpath way down here at the bottom. It'll automatically default to the type of toolpath you have, pocket one. I'm going to just name it um, pocket one all and then push calculate. All right, let's reset my preview. I was working on this earlier. So right here, I can go ahead and preview. preview. It brings a 3D preview here, and it's going to show you exactly how your, um, how your design is going to look on your tile. And I'll show you how to adjust the color as well, just to get a more realistic idea. I'm going to preview the selected toolpath. This is how you select toolpaths down here. Preview selected toolpath. And man, my words look great, but look at that hornet. He looks terrible, right? So pocket toolpaths don't necessarily work for everything. You can't just select your entire design, make one toolpath, and be done. You have to think about how you're going to cut. Okay, it doesn't work for everything. If you want, now let's go back. Instead of creating a whole new toolpath, look at the top of your screen. There's a tab that says New. If you click on that, it goes back to your design. That should look familiar. And let's edit that toolpath, because the words worked, but the hornet didn't. So I'm going to double click on the toolpath right here. And I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to deselect my hornet, because I don't want to cut him out. And let's recalculate this. I'm going to rename it and just say words, pocket one words, calculate. Reset the preview, preview selected toolpath. OK, my words look great. So let's go back to our design. Well, let's try our hornet all by itself. Let's try to just do this hornet with a profile toolpath. Okay, remember profile is going to cut along a line, right? Along the line. So let's do that. And we're going to select our tool. Make sure that the cutting depth is correct, 0.11. It's going to ask you, do you want to cut on the line? Do you want to cut on the outside of the line or on the inside of the line? Let's start with on and see where we get. Shouldn't have to worry about tabs. We're not cutting anything out. All right, profile one, and we're going to name it Hornet. Calculate. Okay, he looks pretty good there, so let's preview it and see what happens. Oh, all right, so not too good. Look at some of these places where the material's left in funky places. So sometimes you have to be strategic. Maybe we don't do the entire Hornet in a pocket or a profile. Maybe we split it up. So let's go back to this profile toolpath, double-click it. And let's look at our design. All of our settings for our cutting depth and our tool is going to stay the same. Instead of cutting on the line, let's cut outside. And I'm going to hold shift and deselect all of these interior shapes of the hornet, right? So all of these little shapes, his teeth, his head, his arm. I just want the outside of the hornet. And we're going to make an outline of him. So we're cutting on the outside, so we have a little more space, and I'm only doing that outside one. Okay, so let's say Hornet Outline and Calculate. Reset our preview, preview all toolpaths. Right? Notice I don't have five toolpaths down here. I still only have two, a pocket and a profile. Okay, now let's go back to our design, and now we need to deal with the inside of this Hornet's face and body. So let's go back to our pocket toolpath. I told you we're really going to only work with two types of toolpaths, pocket and profile. Pockets cut inside shapes, profiles cut along a line. So let's go ahead and go back to our pocket toolpath. This time, instead of selecting the whole hornet, let's just select the parts of the inside of the hornet that we've, whoops, that we've not cut yet. So I'm just going to hold shift, just like in Illustrator. I can select and deselect shapes by holding shift. All right, I've whoops, got almost all of them. There we go. So I'm leaving out his little thumb because I don't think we're ever going to cut inside of that. I think it's just too small. So I've added this to my pocket toolpath. I'm going to scroll down, and instead of just saying words, I'm going to say words and then underscore inside hornet and then calculate. So let's preview this toolpath. That looks pretty good. 
right? But I'm missing part of his face, so I need to go back and fix that. Now, how can I do that? Do I need to go back to Illustrator? No. What I'm going to do is go back to the New tab. And what we're going to do is edit those, what we call anchor points, and what in this program is called a node. So on the right-hand side, there's Edit Objects Tools. This second one right here says Node Editing. If I click on the line, I know somewhere around here is too narrow. It's probably right here. The blue ones are anchor points, and these clear ones are the handles, right? They control the curves. So I'm just going to click and drag and move my anchor points out just a little bit. Okay. For some reason, that anchor point is green. Now, I, all I need to do is go back to this Inside Hornet toolpath by double-clicking. And I'm going to recalculate it. And it looks like I got it. Okay, so let's preview all toolpaths. There we go. There's the other part of his face. I could go back and fix this bottom part, too, to see if I can't get the rest of um, his face to show up. And it, the easiest way would probably be, be to do it like I just showed you. So keep in mind that not every single design is going to be all pocket or all profile, right? Um, if you're doing a pocket and a profile, you should really only need two toolpaths for this project. So we can close this. Um, if you want to click and drag around, you can kind of zoom in by scrolling, click and drag, see what your tile might look like. That's always kind of fun. Um, and then if you want to go back to where you were, you can use these little um, icons at the top. Now, we need to think about saving this. There's two ways to save this. We need to save it as a VCAR file so that we can come back and edit it if we need to. And that's pretty easy. We're going to go to File and Save As. Okay, notice it's going to be a CRV file. Make sure you choose where you're going to save it to. Um, and then you're going to name it. Remember, last name, first name and then name it vcarve, All right? and then you're going to push save. Okay, now it'll show up here, look, last first vcarve. Of course, yours should actually be your last name and your first name. Now, we also need to save it in a format that is readable to the CNC, which is not a vcarve file. So, over here in our toolpaths window, we need to check our toolpath list like that, so that everything is visible. And then we're going to go to this icon right here that says Save Toolpath. It's the second to last one. All right, we're going to output all visible toolpaths to one file. They should show up right here. If they don't show up right here, that means that this is not checked. Look, no visible toolpaths. That means you need to check your toolpaths. All right, saving this as a .nc file should be just fine. If it is not just fine and for some reason something happens with the CNC where the file type um, is giving you error codes, um, then you need to come back here and take a look. You may need to end up saving it as a .ncc file, which, like, here's one, ncc. Okay, but for now, I want everybody to save it as a .nc file. Once you select that, it should be automatic, making sure your toolpaths are there. We're going to push Save Toolpaths. And also, last name, first name, and instead of t saying vcarve, I want you to say CNC. All right, save it in the correct place, and then push save. This NC file, if you go back to this vcarve file and make edits, you need to go and resave the toolpath like this because it's not going to update that .nc file. We're saving in two, for two different purposes: one for vcarve editing one for CNC operations. So don't go ahead, don't save your toolpath like this as an NC. Don't save it until you are completely done with all of your toolpaths and they look exactly how you want them to in vCarve before you come and do this. This should be the last step in vCarve. Okay, I think that covers everything. Um, we've gone over what are toolpaths, how to create them, what are your bit settings, your cutting depth, how to preview. Um, the one last thing that I want to show you is how to change the color of this. So it's super simple. When you go to your preview toolpath here, you can choose the color plastic you want down here in the bottom, right? We can do green instead. And then click global fill color. You can adjust the color inside your tile too. Okay, hope this was super helpful. Good luck operating the CNC.